the big personalities on the big stories. We got some big personalities right here on this desk. We get you started here on First Things First. Catch it on Monday through Friday only on Who gets them started, Jenna Wolf? I get them started, there Nick you Ray. Go. Well done. Back Jenna. here with Chris Broussard, another big Keep personality. That, yes. that one up. I can that get. One. That she one. can show up on awesome. the show. Absolutely. Her, uh, the British good. lady, yeah. bring them back. Here's the deal Jenna Wolf, bye-bye. All right, here's the deal with the Celtics, Broussard. Sometimes they look really good and sometimes they look really bad, but almost always Kyrie Irving is right there in the middle of it. Can't seem to escape the finger pointing this season. Charles Barkley had some harsh words for Kyrie, calling him, quote, one of the most miserable people I've ever seen. Broussard, you agree with Chuck? Well, look, it was kind of a little bit funny what he said and all that, but we have to realize we've seen a lot of people with a lot of money, a lot of success, not be happy, you know, oh, and, and be miserable. Time. So we just don't have a mic in front of them. Well, when right, and you, and, and you see people, you know, do things. So unfortunately, money, as great as it is, and it answers a lot of problems. There's no doubt, but it doesn't always cure unhappy. The, the human condition, right? Like, right. It, 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 now. I hope Kyrie is not miserable, all right? But if, if he, and if he's not, I'm assuming he's not, he needs to look at what Chuck said, though, and say, is this what I'm projecting, though? You know, and, and change it, my demeanor. I like that. Change the way I'm acting, because hope, like, if he's miserable, you then you need to get to some it. help. You're saying listen to it. Right. Before you just totally disregard it, listen to it. Why would someone who's covering this game say, Exactly. Is that what they see? Exactly, right. Chris. I, 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 that's what he needs to do, and you know, and he also needs to sit back and say, maybe I'm not just enjoying all the blessings I have. Mm -hmm. Let me look at the good things rather than looking at. Yeah, I don't like dealing with the media, and you brought up some great points, and it's true, but. Let me look at the great benefits that I have, the blessings I have, so he, he can celebrate the great things he has in life. The, the one thing that, that in dealing with especially these NBA players, because that's what we're getting at now. We're getting guys that are starting to react as if, you know, they don't want to talk to the media or them playing and being in the limelight is not part of the overall scheme. And they're not, they're not pleased with the type of attention that they're getting. So for me as an NFL player, it's totally different. The amount of times you have to meet with the media. We had it structured. I had one scheduled appointment during and after the game, I would typically meet with the media. But also I would do this. If someone else had a big game and at my locker, I would address people briefly. I wouldn't go into the main room if they didn't. If someone else had a big game, I would address people at my locker and before going into the press room, I'd slip off and be off into my car. And it wasn't that I was mad, it wasn't that I was jealous. Now people wrote things, oh, Chris Carter, he missed the media session. No, I didn't. I was at my locker, but there were less media requirements. And I know myself, man, I was not happy. And I know there was a few people that I went after because I wasn't happy after practice, before practice, having to answer the redundancy of questions. And there's certain things and there's certain questions, they get you upset when you're talking about your teammates and things like that. Chris, did you ever interview Patrick Ewing when he was playing? Patrick Ewing had an issue with lights. If a cameraman put the lights on, he hated it. He was miserable. He would snap at you. And he, admittedly, he's like, shut your lights off. I don't want, and everyone was just trying to do their jobs. Then he went into broadcasting. I spoke to him many years later, and it was, I feel bad the way I reacted. I feel bad the way I snapped. I, I don't have any of that attention around me now. I wonder, you know, knowing now what I knew then, if I would have handled it differently, if it would have carved a different path for me, if it would have scoped something out differently in my career, maybe it would have, maybe it wouldn't. There are a lot of players who don't like it now right. who understand and they become it later. part of the media. Right. That, that's commonplace for a guy. And, and I dealt with Patrick and other players who, Patrick really didn't have a great relationship with the media. Right. And, and somewhat, you know, Again, I get it because New York, they went at him hard. Yes. And, you know, sometimes your words are twisted and things are sensationalized. But you, I, one thing I used to always look at the Knicks before I even started covering them, you would see on SportsCenter, all of their interviews were like in the parking lot. Like, like the media would have to go get them wow. outside yeah. in the parking lot down. by their car yes. to chase them down. Right? Interviews. Yes. yes, I mean, they're Mercedes. running from the media. So KD and Kyrie, they're not the first ones to deal with this. But to your point, technology, now they're, they're 
out in the public eye even more than they used to be. Listen, there are, I'm, I'm certain of it. There are people watching this right now saying, boo hoo, cry me a river. You make all this money, you have all this fame, what do you have to worry about? And they're saying that from uh, just uh, uh, air conditioned apartment. And there are, and they, my life is hard, man. I've got a job I don't like. I got, I, 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 I'm trying to struggle to pay the bills. And there's someone maybe in Baton Rouge thinking, all I, I, if I could just get an air conditioned apartment, right. it would solve everything. That's all I would need. And there's someone somewhere else in the world saying, looking at that person in Baton Rouge in the air conditioning saying, man, if I could just not have to walk an hour to get water for the day. No matter where you are, you normalize eventually right. your circumstances and it does not cure overall general happiness. I get it. Life is easier with money, of course. And there are more fun things to do when you are a superstar NBA player than when you're someone working multiple jobs just to pay the bills. No doubt about it. But there's there's always someone that's got it better than you. And there's always someone that thinks if I only had it as good as you, it would solve all my problems. What you were alluding to earlier is people that are very, we, we see a lot of people, not athletes typically, but very famous, very successful people that are in other elements of the entertainment industry struggle so much with happiness that they fall into deep depression. Right. The, the, we, how many of our stars, musicians, right. or actors have either overdosed or suicide? Like, this is, this is going to be consistent throughout. And Kyrie, to his detriment, has been very honest about all of it. Like he's worn his emotions on his sleeve to a degree, which has made him more of a topic than he wants to be. I think we do a terrible job of trying to appropriate sports skills or gifts with normal living skills. If a guy can shoot from 27 feet in a ridiculous fashion, we just, we just think that the media and everything else that goes with being with that gift, that they're going to be able to handle that. We misappropriate that. We act as if they're going to be great parents. They're going to be great friends. No, they're a great athlete. And typically, off the court, off the field, off the baseball diamond, they are just normal to average people. And in some of their skill levels, it's poor. Right. Now, we know their athletic skill is they're at a supreme level at a very, very elite level. But some of the other things they can struggle with in life, but we don't give them that because they're rich, because they're Kevin Durant, because they're Kyrie Irving, and off the court, there is some normality. They just wanna be normal. And society typically won't let them. And I would take it even a step further. Typically, if you reach this level of elite skill at anything at that young of an age, not only when it comes to the other things in your life, are you just normal, but very often you're distorted. Right. You've spent so much time and attention honing this specific thing, your other skills are deteriorated. They're actually below whatever the underdeveloped. average. Underdeveloped. Underdeveloped, yeah, absolutely. They're, they're below whatever the, the average. That's one of the great things, honestly, about LeBron be. James. He's very well-rounded human being to have such success that he has. All right, we gotta take a break. Chris, stick around. Coming up, did LeBron passing Jordan and scoring cementum as the GOAT? That's ahead on First Things First. It's not perfect.